everybody and welcome to my sewing room. If you haven't been here before, my name is Rosemary and on this channel we try and do a little bit of sewing, a little bit of crafting, a little bit of embroidery and even show you some new sewing machines that are coming out occasionally. I always try and show some different kinds of techniques with new feet that you may have never used on your sewing machine and just try and, and mix it all up. And today, last time when we were here, um, I said I wanted to do something that maybe might show a little inspiration on things that you can do with your embroidery machine, some of the designs that are out there. And um, recently I went to iBroidery. If you haven't gone to iBroidery yet and you have a brother sewing machine, I really encourage you to do that because it's a great channel with a lot of fun little Disney designs. And recently I went to the uh, iBroidery site and they've come out with some new um, Halloween Mickey Mouse characters that are really cute. And then on top of that, I went to Joann's and lo and behold, Joann's had fabric that matched the designs that just came out on iBroidery. So I thought that was really cool. And when I bought this one that has the Mickey Mouse characters on it, I also found this one that's just like a gray and black um, gingham check, which goes really well with the colors that are in it. So then I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to have to make a little dress. So I went through my patterns and I found this little dress pattern. So one of the things I really encourage you is, is get a real basic little girl's dress pattern. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then use your imagination and see what you can do with it. So I have a granddaughter, her name is Layla. She's uh, 15 years old, but when she was only about five or six, I made this little dress that I'm gonna put up in the corner of the screen. And it was purple check, and I had some cotton see-through kind of, um, it wasn't organza, it was just made a really lightweight see-through fabric. And I embroidered uh, Tinkerbell all over it because she really loved Tinkerbell. And, and then I put it over the top to cover up the gingham check and it was just really cute. And so I was just thinking to myself, oh, what could I kind of go along those same lines and make a little dress that, um, that has the Mickey Mouse Halloween characters on it. So that's kind of what you need to do. You need to take your fabric that you've purchased and, and lay them on top of each other and think, well, this would make the dress and then this could make a pentafor or maybe maybe I could just kind of put it across the bottom of the dress like this and then put something over the top so then I went shopping and I looked at a different fabric store and I found this really pretty orange silk organza and I thought, well, yeah, that's going to do it. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put that over the top and I'm going to see how it looks. So I'm going to move the camera. I just want to show you a couple of things that I had to do in order to get started on this little dress. So here's that fabric that I'm going to go ahead and I laid the pattern out and I cut it. And on this pattern, it has this version here that doesn't um, that comes down and then you put a panel on the bottom. So I said, oh, that'll be a good idea. Let's do that with the Mickey Mouse fabric. So I folded it up and cut that part so that when I go to sew this, I'm going to sew the Mickey Mouse fabric along the bottom here. And then I'm going to lay this silk organza here. And I think what I want to do is I want to take another small like um, bias cut piece of this and sew it across the bottom again so that it has a little substance around the bottom of it. I'm going to do that. But the first thing I needed to do was I needed to embroider these characters on this organza and that is not an easy thing to do. Um, so, and I also kind of wanted to show you, I, I, I went to Joann's and I picked up some black um, piping and some rickrack and even another rickrack and I don't even know if I'm going to use it but I got it just in case I need it. Okay so I have a small hoop here. I actually embroidered this with um I actually embroidered this with, with my bigger hoop but I want to show you how easy this is to do this. So this is um, a sticky back dissolve away and I know I've shown you before that if you take it and put it in the hoop all you have to do is score it and peel the top off and then stick something down but I actually wanted to put this in the hoop so I cut a piece that was big enough for all of my fabric and then I went ahead and peeled this off and you have to be really careful if you do this because if it 
while you're handling it, if you accidentally fold it over on top of each other, it'll stick to itself and you never get it apart. Ask me how I know that. Um, but, but anyway, so here's some more of my silk and or, organza, and I'm just going to lay it across the top and smooth it down. So this is a completely dissolve away fabric. I don't have to worry about there being anything left behind after I'm done. And then I'm going to lay it on my hoop and I'm going to put this in the hoop. Another thing is when you put that sticky organza on it, it really keeps the fabric from stretching. Organza has a tendency because it's a loose weave to, to kind of pull in different directions. We don't want it to do that. So um, sticking that stabilizer on it before I hooped it is going to keep it from pulling. And then I have an extra piece of one. This is not a sticky, but it is a complete wash away. And when I put this on the machine, I'm going to let it float between the bed of the machine and under the hoop. That'll add a little extra stabilizer to some of those thicker Mickey Mouse characters that have a lot of stitching on it. Then I'm going to put it in my sewing machine. I'm going to sew it out. And um, obviously, since I've already shown it to you, you know I've already done that. And then I rinsed it really well. I pressed it flat and it came out really pretty and I'm very happy with these little characters. They did on iBroidery have some black and white ones that matched the fabric perfectly, but after I looked at them a little while I decided I wanted the color ones because I thought they were really cute. So um, now what I want to do is I want to go to my computer and I want to show you just how easy it is to download something from iBroidery if you've never done it before. And then I'll show you some tips on how to put together a little dress. Okay, so here we are on iBroidery. It's iBroidery.com. It's really easy to find. And once you get it open, you will see that um, right here at the very top, it has some design categories. And so far, it's just showing you the Anita Good Design, the Dakota Collectibles, Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, and Pixar. But there's a whole bunch more um, design categories. If you come up here and you hit home, and design categories. Um, see, you can see that they have animals and flowers and uh, some of the built-ins that are in some of the brother machines. Um, just a whole lot of stuff. And But if I, what I did was I went into new designs and under new designs, they have um, some Christmas and they have some Pixar and they have, oh my gosh, I don't know where it went. Let's go back to design categories. I think I accidentally clicked on something. New designs. So here's Mulan, born in the USA. And let's see if we go down a little bit from here. It's too cute to spook. And I'm going to click on that. And here's the these are the black and white ones I was telling you about that match that fabric absolutely perfectly. You'll find everything that you want. But before you download anything, you need to sign in. So it says, welcome, sign in my account. I'm going to click on that. I can click on new customer start here and it, there it's going to ask me for my name and my email address and my password and kind of set everything up. But since I've already bought things before, I can sign in and this remembers an old password. I don't know why I can't seem to get rid of it, but it always comes up there. So I'm going to put this password in. And log in. Sorry, you know me, I'm one of those people that struggles with passwords. Log in. Okay, so now it says welcome Rosemary and I can go into it and I can um, let's just go back home and let's just go to something like Marvel and here's the Avengers. They have a whole bunch of really cool stuff in here and we'll just pick one that we want and then all you have to do it tells you how much it is. It actually tells you the thread you want and you hit add to cart and it'll put it in the cart for you. And then you can come up here to the top and say check out. And once you check out, 
it's going to ask you to register a machine and you need to do that because it's a brother site and they want you to put in your machine and they're going to want your serial number of your machine and they're going to want the number of your machine and the number of your machine is in your setting menu of your sewing machine it'll actually have a stitch count on the page um your version you know, whatever your most recent version of your software is on your machine and a number and put that number in there and then once you do that you can select one like right now I have a couple of different machines in here so I can select my machine and put it in there and then when I download it it'll download so what I want to do is I already have bought some of these so I'm not going to do that but I'm going to go up here to home again and then I'm going to hit my account and account options. And if I go into account options, I can click on view your downloads and it will allow me to go in and view some of the things I bought in the past. See the way they're all right there, everything I bought in the past and I can click download. So once I paid for it, I can click download and it, and it will download right into my computer. see the way it just came down here and I wanted to tell you that once you do that it actually puts the number of your sewing machine right there this is SM for spider-man number 33 is the spider-man um, design but this number this you know, that's right here that is my sewing machine number and it's going to absolutely insist on that sewing machine number um on the end of it if you go back in there later and um change the name say i want to call this spider-man number three and take that number out then the machine isn't going to recognize it anymore because it has to have the sewing machine number on it to prove that you actually have a brother sewing machine and um, I can't use this design on any other sewing machine but my sewing machine. So it keeps kind of keeps their designs a little bit more private and among themselves. So you can see how fun they are um, to download some of these designs and um, and sew out something like uh, like we were working on just now. Um, so anyway, I want to um, get back to making that little dress and just kind of show you what you can do. And we'll finish it all up and we'll see what it looks like. So the first thing I wanted to show you on this video is um, just a little tip on making a little collar on a girl's on a little girl's dress. And um, I tried to do this on the sewing machine and it just seemed like my hands and everything kept getting in the way. So I'm just going to try and do it right here on my ironing board to kind of just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so there, here's my two different pieces of my collar and I put interfacing on one of them. It's really important to put interfacing on parts like collars and waistbands. It really makes a big difference in your um, sewing and I'll be honest with you, I, I was growing up my mom was really struggled and there were times when she used um, just a piece of old sheeting to go in the middle of it and it worked for what she needed to get done but um, you'll be so much happier if you just take the time to go and buy some interfacing especially the iron on one and iron it in there and it'll come out so much nicer so i showed you a little bit earlier um that i had bought this piping and this is really um something that's already made it's already got the piping and it's sewn in on a biased piece of fabric and it works really well and they don't cost very much and it adds so much to the little dresses and what i want to do is i want to put the piping in this uh, collar and I'm also going to put it in the waistband and it'll just add just a little bit of um, spark of black fabric in there that'll make a big difference and just that little bit of extra embellishment that you put in there so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the, the piping on to this little collar and in order to do that I'm going to use this this is a I call a piping and purling foot and it's completely clear and it's made for brother sewing machines and if you turn it over you can see there's a little channel and i can actually lay this down right through the middle of a channel that you could put a string of pearls in if you wanted to do that it works really good for that but it also works good for this piping because i can take this piping and lay it across like this and it'll sew right um along 
let me turn it this way and set it right there on top of the piping and it'll sew right along that piping without causing any problems and you can use something even a little thicker than this if you're doing a pillow or something and you have um, welting on there that you want to do or this little tiny piping that goes around the little girl's dress so I'm going to use that foot and I really recommend it it works really well and the other thing I'm going to do is before I take it and sew it onto this piece of fabric is I'm going to cut I'm going to use some really sharp little tiny scissors and I'm going to cut some little slashes into here clips into this so that when I go to lay it on here and stitch around wait that's the wrong way it's going to go this way you're going to lay it like this and as I move it around this tight little curve here it'll it'll bend the way I want it to bend and then I'm going to put the needle right up against the edge and I'm going to sew around it so I'm going to do that first and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next Okay, so I went ahead and I did that, and I did it in a, a white thread because I wanted you to be able to see how close to the piping I was able to get on this. Um, I would normally do that with black thread. And then here's my other piece, and I'm going to lay it right on top. Now, I could do this in one step, put the two pieces together with the piping and sew it, but it's really hard to get it accurate and make it look nice. So that's why I do it in two steps. I sew this one first, then I lay this on top of it, and then I'm going to take it back to the sewing machine, still keep the piping foot on, and then sew right up against the piping again. And then we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like finished. Okay, so I'm at the ironing board now. And first thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use my little sharp scissors and I'm going to cut some little clips as close as I can to my stitching, especially in these really tight curves right here, because I want this to curve around nicely. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it inside out. Excuse me. And then I'm going to press it with a good hot iron. And I'm going to take my sewing clapper and put it down there. And um, so that, that's just a really basic little collar with piping, but see that what, how much it adds to uh, just a basic little collar by putting that piping around the outside of it. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it on the bodice to our dress. Okay, so I have surged the shoulder seams of both of my bodice pieces. And if you, I would say most little girls patterns are going to tell you to cut two bodices, um, four backs, and two fronts of everything so that you have a full lining on here. So here's the um, here's the, the lining piece, and here is what the dress is going to be actually made of the gingham check. So I've gone ahead and surged the shoulder seams, and then here's my little collar piece, and I want to put it so that it goes right here around the neck here and just kind of meets right here dead in the center and then I'm going to pin that in place here's my, this is my funny little pin cushion that I have absolutely used forever my my kids give me a bad time about it um, my daughter tells me mom that was my pound puppy I honestly don't remember but it makes a great pin cushion so I've been using it for years um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a pin in here to make sure it goes there. And I'm going to put a pin in here to make sure it goes there. And then I'm going to work it all the way around to the back. And it should fit in here perfectly so that I have a, a little, about an inch back here to put my zipper in. And that's what I want it to do. And then once I got, I've got that in place, I'm going to actually take it and baste around the neckline so it doesn't move because it's, there's nothing more frustrating than have you get this completely sewn and turned inside out and realize the collar moved and it doesn't look nice. So we'll, we'll baste it in place first before I put the other side on. But once I do that, then I'm going to take this piece 
and lay it over the top like this and then sew all the way around that neckline and turn it inside out so that I can put the sleeves on it and um, I think I'm going to um, sew the so the side seams too so that this seam is lost inside instead of um, leaving a, a a surged edge on the other side. It's kind of hard with children's clothes because this little arm gets to be really tiny and it's hard to fit that in there. So I'll think about it and you'll know by the time I bring it back to you and show you whether I went ahead and did the sleeves so that they look like a lining or not. Um, but let's go ahead and go to the sewing machine. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then um, I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so I'm back and I wanted to show you um, what I did. I sewed the sleeves on and I thought about it and I thought and I decided that because I was going to use my serger to finish off the edges, I would just go ahead and, and take the lining and the and the um, main part of the dress and put them together and put the sleeves on in one piece and then um, put the elastic in the sleeves and then just sew straight down this way. And when I get to this part, I will hand sew this little um, seam that's right here down so you can't see it and it'll be fine um, and that's a lot easier than trying to do a set and sleeve in a little tiny uh, size 3 dress so I think that worked out pretty good and let me turn it around to the other side so this is the inside lining of the dress and this is the right side of the dress so if I turn it completely inside outside right I guess that's the way you say it outside right um, this is the way it's going to look. Here's the little collar, and here's the bodice, and then these are the little ties that go around to the back. And this fabric matches my embroidery that I'm going to do perfectly. So now that we've got the bodice completely put together, um, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the skirt. And I want to show you a little bit, um, some tips on how to sew on that organza that we're going to do embroidery on. Okay. So here's my organza and I have cut it and the first thing you want to do is cut it with a rotary cutter. You want a nice straight line and see the way this kind of lays here like this so it almost looks like I cut it on a curve. It's just the way this fabric is. It's a pain in the neck and it moves all over the place. So after I've cut it with a rotary cutter and I know I have it nice and straight, when I go to put it on this pad I want to make sure it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to measure in from the edge an inch. Or you could do half an inch if you want to. It's up to you. But you want to measure it an inch and you want to use one of these um, disappearing pins. And if I had a felt marker, it would probably be better than this one that has a ballpoint one. Because it doesn't want to draw on this stuff as well as I would like it to. But I can see the line. That's all that really counts is that I can see the line. So then I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it right on that line. And I'm going to pin it with a glass head pin. Glass head pins, you can iron over them, and they stick down into it. And this is one of those wool mats things that you've seen on TV and on um, Facebook. They're great. Not only do they hold the heat in them, but that you can stick pins in them. So I like that. So now I'm going to press this down. And I'm using steam so I can press it really good. And then I'll take the pins out and I'll fold it again right on that edge of that fabric, just right there like that, and pin it again. Make sure I keep it nice and straight. And then I'm going to do it again. I want a really good crease in this fabric. And I've tried rolled hem feet. I've tried just turning the fabric under and, and stitching it down with a little teeny tiny rolled hem. It never lays flat. It always has little pull lines on it or it, it curls the way I don't want it to and it doesn't lay the way I want it. So I'm gonna, this is the way that I think works the best by pressing it like this. Then I'm going to stitch right on the edge of this right here with my sewing machine. And I already did it on this side. And I really like the way it came out. It looks nice and flat and it's really pretty. So then I'm going to turn this fabric up to the wrong side and I have this. This is just some more of this of the gray fabric that I purchased and I've cut it on the bias two inches wide and folded it and pressed it in half. I'm going to lay it right here 
on the edge of my fabric and I'm going to turn it open it up and stitch a quarter of an inch here and then flip it around to the other side and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there it is. Completely finished with the bias tape across the bottom. I wasn't real thrilled with the way it looked, I, I, so I put some black rickrac on it. Whenever in doubt, put some rickrac on it and it'll make it look good. So I think that's going to be exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and put the skirt on my little dress and then put the apron with that and I'll show it to you all finished. So before um, we get back to the little dress, I just wanted to show you a quilt that I'm going to be showing at So Fun when I get ready to do that in January. Um, but while we're talking about embroidery, I thought you'd like to see some of the designs. These are all Spider-Man designs that are on the embroidery site that you can download. And um, it's just another way uh, that you can use some of the embroidery designs that are out there. I just went out and bought some fabric that has Spider-Man on it and then embroidered this. And then I kind of wanted to show you that I used my Stellaire sewing machine and the fill that looks like bricks to fill in the background. I used a light gray, but it definitely stands out rather than it would if I'd done it in white. And I thought that was a really cute way to fill that area. And then each one of these squares, I'm gonna do a different kind of fill in it. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet. You can see I'm not finished with it yet. But um, there's another one that I've put the bricks in the background. And I confess, in all honesty, I got this idea from another video on um, the Brother website. So I just thought that was a really cute idea and um, just another way to kind of inspire you and make you think of something that you might be able to do for one of your grandchildren or one of your kids. This one's going to actually go to my little great grandson who's three years old and he's an absolute Spider-Man freak. So I'm sure he'll really appreciate this quilt. Um, so let's go and sh I'm going to show you that cute little dress. Okay, so here's the little dress. It's completely finished. And um, I, as I showed you before, I went ahead and I put um, rickrack across the bottom here. And I asked, I also put rickrack across the bottom here. So um, I think it came out really cute. I'm really pleased with the result in the end. Um, I am going to put this on my great granddaughter, Luna, and uh, take a picture of her and probably put it on my Facebook page and my Instagram. So if you want to see that on her, uh, keep an eye out for it. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to be able to do that. But um, just keep sewing, keep embroidering, comment, subscribe, and um, make suggestions. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.